Now, not to tempt the demo gods, but I am doing demo. I'm going to spend most of the next half hour um, live coding, if you will. Um, and so, but let me start out with just a few slides and tell you where we're going to go. As Damani said, it starts with the application developer. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, please holler if you don't see slides. I'm going to go ahead and go into present mode. And what I'm going to talk about today is a new product, Weave GitOps. And I am so delighted to be here talking to you about the Weave GitOps product. We have just published a blog post moments ago, so you'll be able to see some more details on this. I'm going to give you a live demo of this product. And without going any further, I want to thank my whole team here at WeaveWorks um, for the tremendous job pulling this first version of this product together and for making the bits available to all of you. So here's the punchline. Everything that I show you here today, you're going to be able to do immediately following this talk. In fact, if you are resourceful, you can find the download links and maybe follow along. So what is this Weave GitOps thing that I speak of? Well, Weave GitOps is number one, the easiest way for you to use GitOps to optimize your software lifecycle. It's about the developer. Now, you're gonna see later on today when I do the closing keynote for the day that this doesn't, these patterns, and ultimately this product does not exclusively focus on the developer experience, because as it happens, GitOps is something that is of value up and down the stack, infrastructure, platform, all of those things. But what we want to do is we want to focus on where the value creation ultimately is for your organization, which is when you build digital assets that benefit your customers, and your customers then become delighted customers, and that drives wonderful business outcomes for you. This is the easiest way for you to optimize your software development lifecycle using GitOps. Weave GitOps favors convention over configuration. What we mean by that is it has a very turnkey getting started experience. What I'm going to show you in the live demo, I'm going to show you a few commands. And with those commands, we are baking in some opinions. We expect those opinions to cover 80% or so of the, the use cases that you're going to need. But it's not going to cover 100%. And we don't want you to go to a different tool when you need something more sophisticated. So we've GitOps strikes that perfect balance between getting started in the easiest way possible and allowing you to do custom configuration where you need to. And I'm going to show both of those today. Speaking of those configurations, how does that happen? Well, you get to program your GitOps automations. You get to build up what the GitOps automations are going to do. The very things that we just heard Tiffany and Paul talking about, those things, I'm going to show you the programming model for that. And it's open source. So all of this is available for you to take a look at in GitHub. In short, Weave GitOps is your GitOps platform. And again, we're going to start with the application developer. So let's talk about that application developer. I promise I'm going to be in my IDE and in my CLI in just a moment. But I want to paint the picture of what we are aiming to do here. We're gonna focus on this, this persona. We're gonna focus on the developer and the DevOps engineer. She is responsible for delivering her assets to her customers very frequently, um, very, very often. And she's also responsible for up, uh, operating those applications in production. In support of her is the platform engineer who's responsible for maintaining security compliance, resilience, cost efficiency, and many more going to be showing you a demo, not in this session, but in just about an hour after this session where we're going to focus on the platform engineer. So what is the software development lifecycle that she's going to be executing? Well, here it is in a nutshell. This is what I'm going to demo. She's going to be in her IDE, you'll see my fancy IDE, writing code and doing unit testing. 
When the unit tests are all passed and she's implemented some new features, she's going to build a container image. That container image is going to be deployed into the development environment where more extensive testing in a close to production environment can be done. Once those integration tests pass, it's going to be approved for production and be deployed into the production cluster. In slightly more detail, I we're going to bring the GitOps element into it. Of course, while I'm writing the code in unit testing, I'm committing code into a Git repository. This is the source Git repository. Eventually, that source is going to be built into the container image. That's what you see above the top. Now, you see two other Git icons here. In the lower left is the Git repository that holds the application configuration, not the source code, but the configuration. And together with the container image, that's what's going to be deployed into the development environment. And then after that is um, uh, tested, there's another Git repository that holds the application configuration for production, it might include some secrets, secrets for production, for example. And then that together with the container image will get deployed into the production environment. In my scenario, the two lower Git repositories are actually folded together into one repo. I'm just going to use branches for simplicity. And with that, let's jump into the demo. Let me show you first what we have available here. Here is my repository. I have my web app, my simple web app. It's the pod info web app that we know and love in the WeWorks context here. And I've got that available. And I've been maybe doing a kubectl apply into a Kubernetes cluster, but I've got my application configuration in there. So there's the YAML files for the deployment, the services, all of those types of things. I also have available over here a Kubernetes cluster. This is my development Kubernetes cluster, and it's a kind cluster. You can see that it has just all the basic things that come out of the box on my kind cluster. Down here in the lower left, I have my uh, local Git clone of the pod info config. Um, and you can see here that I'm in the development branch. So going back over here, you can see that there's a single branch in the repository, and that's the development branch. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to enable um, GitOps for this cluster. And I do that very simply with the command, we go install. And that's all there is to it. Now, again, everybody, please take a moment and pray to the demo gods for me here. I just realized that I forgot to update my credentials. So I'm hoping, hoping I'm still logged in to the environment. Um, we'll see that in just a moment. For kind, it's not a problem, but later on I'll be on EKS Cuddle. So what's happening here is it's installing a number, number of components into my cluster. You'll see those components pop up here in just a moment. And when they do pop up, you're going to recognize those. Those of you who know and love Flux, you're going to recognize those as the pieces, many of the pieces that come in Flux. So as it's doing the container creating, let me go ahead and widen this so that we are not wrapping. So it's a little bit easier to read. But you can see that the containers all, are all being created. And you can see things like the source controller, the notification controller, the customized controller, et cetera. So all of those things are booting up. The containers are getting created. I'm a little worried that it's going so slowly. But what is happening here and while that is, um, and I'm seeing an error. Yeah, you know, I think my kind cluster is not very happy. So the demo gods may be frowning on me right from the get go, but the last time this happened to me, it eventually converged and, and came into a happy place. Looks like that uh, is running now. Um, I noticed that I have a number of restarts other areas. So hopefully I'm not running out of capacity. Um, so, but what's happening here is we are installing what I like to call the GitOps runtime into the cluster. So while, while we're waiting for that to come up, let me show you what I mean by that. Here's a pictorial representation of the GitOps runtime. And you'll notice that it's installing a number of controllers. I categorize those things into two categories. There's the delivery controllers, and those are things like the source controller, helm controller, customized controller, and so on. And then on the right-hand side, I have a bunch of runtime controllers. 
So these are the controllers that are actually keeping the workloads that are initiating the workloads in the target environment and running those. Over the top of that, you can see that we're gonna program against all of those controllers, creating something that I'm calling the GitOps automation. So this is what we're installing into the cluster right now. Let's see how things went. Ah, it's going extremely slowly. I'm wondering if there's something that I can free up on my machine um, because uh, we're going to be at a little bit of a loss um, if this if I run out of capacity on my kind cluster. We can go ahead and move forward though. So um, uh, what is going to happen next? Let me explain what we're going to do next. Next, we are going to create the GitOps automation that we um, are going to use to control the deployment of my application into this environment. So remember, I had the application configuration and the command that I'm gonna run, I'll go ahead and show you that command over here on the right-hand side. And hopefully with any luck, we're gonna have these things up and running in just a moment. But the command looks a bit like this. And this is in fact, the exact command that I'm going to run. And so check it out in the upper right hand corner. Ah, very good. So we are up and running. Again, these restarts here are absolutely an indication that I was running low on capacity in my kind cluster. I did reboot my machine, but well, let's just cross our fingers and hope that things recover a little bit better. So here's the command that I'm gonna run. What this command means is that I am going to take my application, remember I'm in the pod info config directory, I'm gonna take my application and I'm gonna add GitOps to that application. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to specify that I want to GitOps what is in the web app directory. So remember over here in my repository, I had the web app directory. Now by default, I could have left that path off and it would have taken the root of the repository. But what we're enabling you is we're enabling a number of different repository configurations. You could have multiple applications in your repository. And so you could have, for example, something closer to a mono repository. But this particular app is focused on that web app directory. And then it's also focused on the development branch of my repository. You'll see later on when I bring in the production environment that I'm going to, of course, point to the production um, uh, uh, branch. And then it says, okay, go ahead and apply that here. So I'm gonna hit enter and you're going to see a number of things scrolling by. Again, those of you who know and love Flux are gonna recognize these things as the Flux custom resources that are getting created to create the GitOps automation. The GitOps automation is now getting uh, recorded. It's getting deployed into, it's getting pushed up into the Git repository. And then as a result of that, getting deployed out into production. What we should see in just a moment is when we come back, I'm gonna show you a video for a moment. We're gonna see the application as a result of this, the application getting deployed. Again, hopefully my, my kind cluster doesn't, doesn't uh, go up in flames. So what I also wanna share with you is I wanna share with you an early view. This is not available in the binary that you can download today, but I wanna show you an early view of the user interface that's being built for Weave GitOps. What you see here in the user interface is you see exactly what just happened. You see a two-step GitOps automation that just got created. The first step is it's looking in the application configuration repository for pod info. And then the second step is it's gonna apply a customization and then apply that to the cluster. Beneath that, you can see the Git, Git remember we're doing everything via Git, Git um, operations via Git. So you can see here that I have my initial application configuration, but with that WeGo command that I just showed you, the GitOps automation has added, we, we've GitOps has added the GitOps automation to my configuration cluster. What will happen then is you'll notice that it's gonna sync that into the cluster. And as soon as it syncs it into the cluster, you can see the artifacts of that con application configuration 
being created, the service, the deployment, and the various pods that are part of the deployment. So this is what's happening. Let's see if that's happened live in production. Sure enough, here we have the web app. So notice that the web app was deployed and I just remembered one uh, step that I did not complete. Let me go ahead and get a new window because I wanna show you this application running. Um, and that is, I am going to, forgive me, I had almost everything set up. I'm going to uh, port forward on this. So give me just a moment. I'm gonna port forward over here to uh, save you the, um, there we go. And what we should see now is localhost 7000, is we should see the application up and running. There you go. So here it is, pod info running version 6.0.7. If I come down into the web app here, we can see that indeed I am running version 6.0.7, in fact, okay? So that's it. I started to summarize, I started with a Git repository that had my application configuration. I started with a base Kubernetes cluster. I enabled the cluster with GitOps I enabled the application with GitOps that tied those two things together. And that's all it took for me to deploy this thing into, into, uh, um, into my Kubernetes cluster. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to um, switch over to my production cluster. So give me just a moment. I'm going to do a, again, I apologize. Uh, there we go. I'm going to switch over to my production environment. So what we're going to see over here in my command line is we're going to see a switch. This is going to switch over to that production cluster. And that production cluster, by the way, is running on EKS. So here you go. You can see I've got my base cluster. And I want to deploy that same application into this cluster. Now, my configuration is going to potentially be different. I can have different overlays over the top, for example. So I'm going to do a git checkout, and I'm going to create a new, oh, a new branch called prod. OK. And so now I am running in the, I am in the prod branch. I've, I'm, I've got my kube config, config pointing to my EKS prod cluster. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to run those same darn commands that you saw before. And hopefully this time you'll see it go a lot more quickly because I'm running on the EKS cluster, not my kind cluster. So it's going to generate the manifest. And again, you're going to see those artifacts get created up here in the Kubernetes cluster. And it's um, going slowly again. Um, so hopefully, there we go. So you can see again, the GitOps runtime is getting deployed. Oh, that's so much better. Look at that. Um, we are running very quickly. We've got one more. Um, the Helm controller is going to be up and running. Beautiful. And now I'm going to run that WeGo app add. So I'm going to add uh, the GitOps automation for my production environment. And so again, I'm going to point to the web app as the path, but this time I'm going to point to the production branch. And again, you'll see this configuration get created. So this is the GitOps automation that's getting created. <clears throat> and in a moment, we'll see the web app come up and running here. So that should only take a moment. And while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to go ahead and do a coup because I want to show you this running in production, kubectl uh, get services in the uh, web app namespace. And those services should come. And look at that. The very first thing that I want to do, because I'm not running on kind and I don't want to port forward, I'm running on EKS, so I can go ahead and use an Amazon ELB. So the first configuration change that I want to make in my production environment is I want to change that to be an ELB. 
So let me come over here. I'm going to go back into my pod info config. I'm going to do this very quickly in the GitHub through the GitHub user interface. Switching to the prod um, branch, I'm going to go down into my web app, into my front end, and into my services. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this and change it from a cluster IP to being a load balancer. And speak up if you see me making a typo. We don't have a lot of time for debugging. Because I'm a good developer, I'm going to go ahead and create a PR for this. So here we go, creating the PR. Now the pull request is going to be available for other eyeballs to look at to make sure that Cornelia didn't make some strange error in um, creating that load balancer. OK, it all looks good. I can look at the files that are changed. I changed from cluster IP to load balancer. Looks good. Let me go ahead and merge that pull request. I'm going to confirm the merge. And when we come back over here, we will see in just a moment, if I put a watch on this, we'll see that that uh, update is going to be propagated out into my um, target environment. So sure enough, there right from the get go, right very quickly, we have the URL. Now this URL isn't going to be live right away uh, because it takes a little while for that to propagate all through the Amazon um, environment. So let me go ahead and, uh, oh, there it is. There's my dev. And I did set those up and there's my production. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in the URL and it won't render right away because it takes, like I said, it takes a little while for that to come up. Um, so, okay. So, but that'll pop up in just a moment. Um, okay, so now what we have is we have the developer working in their IDE and making code changes. And then we have this entire life cycle from the development environment out into the production environment. We've set both of those things up with GitOps. Now, I want to link those things together in a little bit more of a seamless way. So uh, there you go. You can see that my production environment is now up and running. So that URL is now um, available. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, switch back over into my development environment. And I want to make a change. So hopefully my kind cluster has not taken a nosedive while we were um, away for a moment. So you'll see that come up in just a moment. And what I want to do now is make a code change. So I'm going to Control C out of this. Right here in this directory is my pod info. This is where my source code is. So I'm going to go ahead and use my IDE. You can see how kind of weak of a developer I am by using Atom as my IDE. But I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And it's going to come up in just a moment. Oh, my poor little machine is so unhappy. Um, so let me close a few of these windows. And the fabulous, fantastic feature that I've come up with, I've come up with this idea that in fact, it shouldn't say 6.0.7, my user interface should say 6.0.13. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that code change. You can see that this is in my version.go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and commit that change. So I'm gonna do a git status. You can see that I've made a change there to my version.go. I'm gonna do a git add, and then a git commit. My great new feature. And then I'm gonna do a git push, origin into demo. Now, I. At this point, my unit tests have passed and I wanna go ahead and build the container image. Well, I have my CI set up to build on the tagging of a new um, version. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a git tag, 
6.0.13. And then I'm going to push that tag up into GitHub. So I'm going to do a git push origin dash tag tag. Now, like I said, this has my CI environment set up. And so I'm going to come back over here and show you the source code repository. So here's the source code repository. And if I go over here into actions, you can see that I have a GitHub, GitHub action that is now running. These take about two minutes to run. So I'm going to show you some other things while we wait for that. But what's happening now, again, is that I'm building that container image. So going back to the picture that we had earlier, I'm building the container image. And that's this part of the life cycle. So notice that I am setting up this entire flow. I set up the flow that happens here. I've set up the flow that happens here. I've also, I'm now showing you the flow that's happening here. And we're going to be able to stitch all these pieces together. Now, how does the building of the image stitch together with the deployment of that development, uh, the deployment of that new image? After the image, which is going to be 6.0.13 gets deployed, do I then need to come in here in my Git repository and make that change? So again, coming over here into my web app and now into my front end, into my deployment, do I need to come in here and change the 6.0.7 to 6.0.13? Well, with the current GitOps automation that we've given you by default, the answer is yes. You'd have to come in here and make that change. But this is where I want to, I want to customize my GitOps automation. So how am I going to customize that GitOps automation? Well, I'm going to do the following. It turns out that I'm going to add a couple of elements to that automation and I already have them available. And I'm gonna copy them into the right place. Where's the right place? Well, let me show you something. When I added that application to my, to the Git, added GitOps to my application, it created this directory called .wego. If we go down into the WeGo directory, you can see that there's a targets subdirectory. And in that targets subdirectory is the default GitOps automation. It's just the customization that I showed you in the earlier screen, uh, video of the user interface. Now I want to show you something. If we go back in here and oh, look at that, my image finished running. If I go into the application config, or the application repository. Notice that there's a repository called .github. Well, that's where, this has nothing to do with the source code. This is where my CI automation lives. Well, in the case of GitOps, this in the WeGo directory is where my GitOps automation lives. So in order to extend my GitOps automation, I simply need to drop some additional files down in this directory. So I'm going to do that over here. So I'm going to copy from, uh, let's see if my, yep, uh, from my development environment. This is just a, a temporary directory. I'm going to copy some files over into my development. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and do a Git checkout, because I want to do this in my dev branch. Um, so I'm going to check out dev. And now I'm going to copy those additional steps in my GitOps automation into my GitOps automation folder. And uh, I'm going to just, I'm going to make sure that that in fact is the directory. Okay. And now I just realized that I have a uh, file in there that I don't want, but that's okay. I'm gonna do a git status. And there you go, you can see these files that I've created. Now there's one last step that I need to do. And that is that I need to tag that image in the, image in the configuration with a tag that points to the policy that we're gonna use to update that value. 
I do realize I'm running long. I'm almost done, so bear with me. Just another moment. I'm gonna go into the deployment here and I'm gonna edit this again. And I am going to grab this um, annotation, which is gonna drive this part of the GitOps automation. So I'm gonna grab the annotation and I'm going to add it here. Okay, so you can see here that I want to apply this image update policy to this particular version. Now, in this case, in the interest of time, I'm gonna be a bad developer and I'm gonna commit directly to the development branch. Um, oh, in fact, I'm going to need to also uh, do a git pull because I just, let's hope that it pulls. It looks like it pulled indeed. And now I need to do git add. Um, of the GitOps automation. I'm going to commit, uh, add image update to GitOps automation. And then I'm going to do a git push dev uh, origin, origin dev. Okay. And what we should see happen now, and what happened? Um, my poll did not work. Uh, Okay, somebody wanna give me a hint here. What do I wanna do? Um, I am not a, get a, a, a uh, hardcore developer. Well, let me, let me just close up by saying that what has happened, oh, in fact, here's the saving grace. I'm gonna show you through the user interface what would have happened live here. I now, instead of having this very simple two-step automation, I now have a four-step GitOps automation. I'm watching the image repository, I'm updating the config over in the config repository, and then I'm applying to the cluster. So you'll notice here that I've added the image update automation. And now when I hit play, you'll notice that it's going to automatically bump. So Weave GitOps is automatically gonna bump that version number and that's going to cause the rest of this to deploy out into production. So to wrap things up, let me just show you what has happened. I just ran a number of just four Weave GitOps commands and I, draw, I extended my, I configured my GitOps automation to be a little bit more sophisticated to set up this entire workflow in half an hour. And this is something that you as a developer are able to deploy today. So finally, let me just go to my last slide to show you where you can get started. So here's a number of links and I'll put this on the screen and you can go ahead and take a screenshot. Easy to follow links. If you go to weave.works slash product slash GitOps core, you will see all the bits that you need to get started with this. We've also published a blog and next uh, week on uh, the 15th, we're gonna do this walk through again live and we're going to have a bit longer to do so it won't be quite as as fast and you'll be able to ask a whole lot more questions.